Singapore 35776, a stocking darner. I read about it in one of the manuals for one of my sewing machines and I was fortunate enough to find one for sale online. Now if you're looking to darn socks and don't have one of these purpose designed gadgets, you can use a small embroidery hoop. It's not quite as easy and depending on where the hole is it might be a bit difficult to get to, but it is doable. Greetings! Welcome to 24 Washington Avenue where I explore and investigate how threads from the past can still be used today. If you're interested in how I incorporate the old into my practical day-to-day -day life, please be sure to subscribe to the channel, check out other videos, and if you do have comments or questions, I would love to hear from you. Now let's go darn some socks. Here is the culprit sock. As you can see, the heel has worn through and the underside of the toes is also running very, very thin. It hasn't actually broken, so this one's going to be slightly more easy to do than the heel. But I figured that this was an excellent opportunity to introduce you to the Singer Stocking Donner. I bought this on eBay. It came without a box, but it did have the manual, which was nice. And basically, this device holds your sock open, the elastic slips off, and it holds your sock in place while you use your sewing machine to stitch it back up again. This is a free motion quilting or embroidery or darning foot, which I bought on Amazon, I think it was. I'll try to find links and we'll place those down below in the description should I find them. But the manual gives instructions on how to use this and it starts by stating that number one, the feed dogs need to be eliminated from the equation. Why? We're going to be moving this back and forth and round and round side to side and so we do not want that compression between the teeth of the feed dogs and the foot. So they need to be taken out of the equation. There are two ways you can do it. You can either use a cover plate, and this is the one they have in the manual, but I also wanted to show you a couple of other options. This is my British made buttonhole attachment which I'll have to cover in another video I suppose. It's uh, kind of fun because you adjust everything. You don't put the cartridges in like the uh, more common models have. But it comes with this plate that screws onto the base here into the screw holes and covers, it, it has a profile to it so it ends up covering and allowing the feed dogs to operate underneath as they would normally do but it allows you to move things over without the actual teeth pulling into the fabric. It's still a good idea to drop your stitch width all the way down so that the feed dogs are simply going up and down not rotating the way they would normally do and you can actually see on the back here where a previous owner had not done that and it's kind of eaten in but that's their machine not mine so this would just screw in here and it, you do want to use your singer screwdriver for it because it, it has to go in quite quite tightly and then you just continue as normal I also have this hem stitcher that has another style of feed dog cover and this also screws in place and the same thing it has that raised profile this sticks up a bit higher than this one but both can be used uh, as alternatives to the one in the book. The other option, if you do not have a dog cover, 
is simply to put your stitch selector all of the way down and just move slowly. You can operate it with the feed dogs coming up and down without them moving back and forward. You just have to move more slowly, uh, you're slightly more restricted with the movement that you can do. To talk briefly about the darning foot or embroidery foot, if you watched my video, well either of the videos where I'm showing, showing how to patch with an embroidery hoop and the darning foot, it's, it's very similar. And rather than maintaining constant pressure on your fabric like your regular presser foot would do, this lifts up and down with the needle. So this bar here actually goes on top of the needle, so when the needle rises after a stitch is completed, this lifts up. But at the point, the, the, the important thing is that at the point where the needle goes through the fabric, gets hooked around the under thread, the, the bobbin thread, and pulls it back up again, if your fabric lifts at that point, the stitches won't form properly. So it's important that the fabric is flat on the bed while that stitch is pulled through and then it can lift. So that's why this foot is recommended because it is specifically intended to allow for the stitch to catch before the fabric's free to come up. Now as far as placing the sock into the tool, You slip the elastic off, you put this where it needs to go so that the hole is centered and it doesn't matter if you do it one way or the other. What you don't want to do though is end up with the fabric from the sock pulled too tightly or too loosely. So you, you're going to have to evaluate just what the best way is to do this. And this is a fairly round hole. I'm going to suggest that perhaps it's longer in this direction than it is in this. So I will orient the device in that direction and then just slip it through. and put the spring band over top. Now from this point you can maneuver the sock as it needs to be. So you can see based on the lines whether it's pulling too far in one direction or another. So let's just pull that in a bit because that looks a bit loose and of course we're going over the heel right now so there would be some stretch to it, some rounding. This looks like it's actually doubled over. And again, you don't want it to be too tight, but you, you don't, certainly don't want it to be too loose either. I think probably as far as I want to go. Now the book says at this point to cut excess threads away from the edge just to tidy up the hole and where are we? Yeah, down here it says trim the hole neatly so that a ragged edge will not be left after the darn is finished. So I imagine Maybe we can see it better from the other side. You can see how this wants to fall back. So I'll just trim that off so that there's nothing that's rolling over. And I actually think while I'm here, I'm going to move it further down. So let's get all that sorted out. I've got this positioned in far better a way than it was before. The next step is to 
gather the rest of the sock around the outside of the ring so that you have clean access, uh, unhindered access to the to the center part where the stitching is going to be completed. So to do that, simply roll the sock down and then when the framework inside becomes visible you want to kind of push the edges into the fingers which then open to the outside to get all of that excess sockage out of the way. I'll move the toe out of the way so I don't inadvertently sew that in. So these just get bunched in. It really is a very clever little tool. And I've done several pairs of socks using this. I mean, it's never going to be as soft a job as if a person were to take the time to fully go in and re-knit uh, re the socks. But definitely faster. Alright, so the next stage is to tidy up the edges. Because as I said, they will try to roll back and we don't need excess. So that is now ready to go. I'm now going to remove my regular presser foot and position the feed dog plate and what I like to do is just pass the needle through the opening just to make sure that everything is centered the way it needs to be and then screw that as far down as you can Oh, today it's going in all the way. A lot of the time I will actually use a screwdriver to, to push that in, but it feels like it's it's caught, so no need to do that. Now to put the darning foot or embroidery foot in place. Just make sure that this bar goes over top. So when this is pushed down, you'll see how there's a spring that compresses it. It holds it in place while the needle goes down and when you lift up right at that top part the top part of the motion the foot lifts up again I'll just zoom in to show you more detail so the static position with the press of bar football whatever it's called lifted up then that drops down when the needle prepares to rotate down, the foot holds it in place. And when you lift it up, finally at the last minute, that foot lifts up as well, allowing you to move whatever material you have underneath. Now I use that demonstration to pull my bobbin thread up and over. And before we get started, I just want to read how it says how the book says you should start. Run the machine slowly and move the darner steadily with both hands in time with the needle either back and forth or to the right and left. It is advisable to make two or three rings of stitches around any large hole as shown in figure 7, then start stitching from one side across to the other and gradually cover the hole with threads running in one direction, keeping in the outer ring of the outline stitches. And just to show, you can see the outer ring in the picture. Now they're going back and forth, or right to left. Of course, before you can go any further, you need to get this in place. Which means I have to take this off, because this won't fit under if this is in place. So, backing up for a minute. Depending on how thick your sock is, depends on how much of an easy time you're going to have getting it through. But because the arms are at intervals, you can compress 
fairly well, just make sure you don't snag your needle and break it. I've anchored the stitch in place with a short run backwards and forwards. Now I'm going to cut off the tails so that we don't end up with loose tails. Oh dear, that didn't look very good. Let's just move that out of the way. And then proceed nice and slowly just around the outside. Sometimes you bump into the edge and so you have to just turn it so that you have your clearance. And it is important to have a secure bound edge because if your stitching is really strong on the inside and really weak on the outside then the weak stitches around the outside are going to give way far faster. So where I'm seeing that there's evidence of thinning, I'm just going over that a bit more to ensure that we do get a really good outline. Okay, so now from this point, I'm going to run back and forth trying to stick to the knitted rows just nice and slowly making sure that I pass to the edge and I'm just going to turn it this way so that the edge of this foot isn't bumping into the side I'm still feeling that I'm bumping in here so we're going to change gear again and go from side to side this way okay now I'm going to lift again and this time cross thread so we're going to work from side to side this way or maybe I'll do it this way because I keep bumping into the edges. I should have taken these socks off far sooner, then I wouldn't have such a big hole to deal with. And then to finish off, just go back and forth a couple times in the same spot. And remove your work. Tidy up the edges and then open up the fingers, remove the band, remove the frame, and there we have patched sock.